G'day, Starlo here. In this video, I want to share a couple of really effective fly fishing strategies with you. So I often fish a nymph under a dry, but in fact today what I'm doing is fishing two dries. Quite a large bushy one that'll float really well and I'll be able to see. And then a much smaller, more subtle dry, about probably oh, 60 centimetres beyond that bushy dry. And I'm just going to work my way up this run here casting ahead of myself and probing all the likely lies but also keeping my eyes peeled for any rises. I'm fishing an alpine stream in the Australian snowy mountains during mid-November. Still fairly early in the season at this altitude. Just making sure that small dry is floating and it is. Saw a subtle rise just beyond where I landed. I'll work my way up to it. That's got to be pretty close. Maybe the next cast. Yep, he took it and I got him. Oh. Looks like a nice rainbow. Oh, fantastic jump. <laughs> Coming down with the current now and he'll get below me. I'll try and steer him in out of the current. He took that little, little tiny mayfly imitation. I've seen a couple of mayflies over the water, not a lot, but enough to make me think that the trout are probably looking up. Beautiful little rainbow. Not so little. There's the little dry right in the front of his jaw. It comes out very easily. And back he goes. <laughs> Alright, now I'll dry my fly off. I've got my amadou patch here, which is a actually a natural fungus, believe it or not, called amadou. And they make these fly drying patches out of them. They're so good. Well worth having. You just squeeze it in there and it takes the moisture out of the fly and gets it floating again but I'm also going to put a tiny tiny bit of floatant on there as well just tease on a little bit with my fingertips also put a little bit on the other fly which got dragged under while I was hooked up to that fish and we'll keep working our way up so much fun There'll be a bigger fish here somewhere too. It's important to move slowly and blend in with your surroundings as these trout have keen eyesight and the water and air are exceptionally clear up here. It's very easy to spook fish which will often shoot off upstream alerting other fish to your approach. It's a game of stealth. Making reasonably long, splash-free casts is also critical to success. I'm running a four-weight outfit here, which is just about perfect for the task, and my leader is long and fine, about 15 feet all up. I like those drifts right along the bank. That's where the bigger brownies tend to hang out, under the undercuts. Bit of a shallow, riffly area here, but it could still easily hold a fish. Especially on that other side there where it's just slightly deeper. I'm just prospecting at the moment, covering likely water in the hope of finding a willing trout, but always watching for any movement too. My eyes are already scanning the tail out of this next pool, that big glide. Just looks like a prime spot to hold a fish.
I take a step or two upstream between each cast so that I'm constantly covering new water with my two flies. Over that other side looks good. Got him! Oh, good fish too. Good fish. Oh, what a crazy fish. <laughs> Get out from under that other bank. <laughs> brown or a rainbow? I'm gonna say brown, even while it's jumping like that. Uh, maybe not. Once again, the trout's taken the smaller of the two dry flies. Rainbow. And a nice one. On the small dry. <clears throat> wow. Stunning fish. There's that bit of dry in there. I'll put this one back. Don't go and tell all your mates. I keep working my way upstream, moving into a wider, slower pool now. It's all prime water, and I'm trying to cover it as thoroughly as possible, especially that deeper strip along the far bank under the tussocks. But it's essential to achieve a natural drift with the flies, and to avoid drag. Oh, fish just jumped. Further upstream. There's a few in here. I just wish they'd show themselves a bit more. Watch this. That's a good fish. That is a good fish. Oh. Not even sure which fly he took. Oh, there was just a big slashing take where my flies were. <laughs> and I knew he had it. It's another rainbow by looks of it. Ah, this river is in such good condition at the moment. Hmm, it was right over against that far bank in a in a typical brown trout lie, but he's not a brownie. It's a nice rainbow. Oh, I think he might be on the bigger fly. What a gorgeous fish. Not pretty. Yes, he took the he took the bigger fly, the stimulator in front. That's why it was such a big slashing strike. <laughs> Shouldn't at him really, but I won't. That's a pretty good fish. Just pull him up through the grass here. Probably come off. No, he didn't. Wet my hand. Ah, oh, what a beauty. Yeah, took the big fly. When I say big, it's still only a, a 12 or 14, but the little 16 or 18 behind it is the one they've been taking up until now. Okay, I'll get him back. 
back in. Off you go, mate. That's good, go downstream. There's plenty more good water up ahead. I'm still convinced that if I'm going to get a good brown, it'll probably come from under that overcut bank on the far side. Notice the way I just flick a little bit of line back up against the current. It just gives me a longer drift before the flies start to drag. It's called mending. Oh, there's a nice fish. Now, was he rising or was he spooking away from those flies landing? We'll find out, I guess. It shouldn't have been spooking because the flies were... Oh, a fish just flashed under the flies again. There's a lot of fish in here. A lot of them are not taking. Yeah, he shouldn't have spooked that one because I was well behind him. Breeze is just not letting me turn my leader over quite as well as I'd like to. The flies are often landing very close together. I'd rather just have a little bit of separation between them. Better try one over the other side too. Oh, good spot. My smaller fly is really close to the bank. There's no way you'll be able to see it on the screen. You may be able to see my larger bushier fly, but the other one is between it and the bank. And it's just drifting along there really, really nicely. Now it's starting to drag. Drag occurs whenever the flies travel at a different speed to the current, and it's usually enough to put the trout off. Oh, that's a good fish up there. That noise you can hear is the mud sucking at my feet. Oh, there's a fish up there. There's also a duck over here on the other bank, which I don't really want to spook and have go flapping across the water. Breeze is picking up a bit. Besides the duck, there's also something else over there that I haven't even noticed yet. Can you see it? I think what I'm going to do is just sit here for five minutes and watch. Sometimes not a bad idea. Oh, there's a platypus. No, it's not. It's a rackley, a water rat. <laughs> water rat is such a bad name for them. They're such a terrific animal. A rackley. It's an Australian native. I love these cool little critters, but don't leave any of your fish unattended on the bank because they'll happily steal them. This one seems pretty unconcerned by my presence. I'd say he's probably hunting yabbies. <laughs> I'll leave him to it and push on upstream. You probably didn't see it, but there's a rabbit just up here in the tussocks. <laughs> see if I can sneak up. Oh, see if I can sneak up on him. There he is. I can see his ears poking up above the tussocks up here. The fact that I've been able to get that close to a rabbit tells me that I must be moving fairly quietly. Even though it probably doesn't sound like it to you. There he goes. <laughs> he knows I'm here now. I, he stopped and eating grass again. <laughs> but we're not hunting wabbits, as Elma Fudd would say. <laughs> we're hunting twout. <laughs> and despite the strengthening wind and building cloud, I found another one on my double dry fly rig. It feels all right too. It's putting a great bend in the fall weight.
Again, it's taken the small trailing dry, but the surface action is definitely slowing as the weather deteriorates. And on spec after this fish, I changed the trailing dry out for a small, lightly weighted nymph suspended under the dry, and it works. What a spectacular fish. Take me, mate. <laughs> He's taken the nymph. This fish is going really hard. Might be able to land him down here. With a bit of luck. See if I can get him into this backwater. Get my net out. Yeah, that's a lovely fish. Wow, just right in the point of the nose. Ooh, haven't got him yet. I think I'll keep this one. Looks like a very nice eater. You should never count your eaters till they're in the net though. There we go. <laughs> Lovely fish. Wow, really clean. Silvery hen. Fingers in the gills is fine for a keeper. Gorgeous fish. There's my little tiny nymph right in the apex of his top jaw, right where it should be. That'll do for the smoker. Nice. So this, is, this fish has spawned very recently. There's just a few loose eggs still left in her. But she's done the job. So that's good. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's plenty. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man, there's lots of stick caddis and case building caddis. Mmm, lots of caddis. Wow, she's been eating up big to put condition back on after spawning. Oh, such a tiny, look at that, that's still alive. Oh my goodness, it's a little mud eye. <laughs> a mud eye or a dragonfly larvae and it's actually still moving just. <laughs> Amazing. With a keeper for dinner and the weather turning bad, I'm heading back to camp now. Although there's always time for one last cast. <laughs> I really hope you've learned something from watching this video and if you have, please give it a thumbs up like and subscribe to my channel if you don't already. Until next time, tight lines.